Welcome to our Lane Community College BSU Tiny Titan Summit 2. This is our second year of having the Tiny Titan Summit. So people are still coming in. So I'm going to welcome all of you in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Lawrence Rashid, and I am the BSU Advisor and African American Student Program Coordinator. And this is one of our favorite events to have of the year. Um, last year, it was phenomenal. This year, we're doing it virtually. However, it's still gonna be lots of fun. So I know folks are still coming in. So we'll be a little patient with you all as you get settled. Um, and then we're gonna get right into it. So we'll maybe take an additional, maybe two to three minutes. And then we'll get started because because we want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, this year, as you see on the screen, we have a, another phenomenal guest author, Dr. Khalid White, um, and his books that he's going to share with us, um, Little Brother and um, Hermanito, mm -hmm. and Hermano. So definitely going to get into that. Um, and some other fun activities that I'm pretty sure that the young and the young at heart will also appreciate. So I just want to say that we're going to do things a little bit differently. I know um, on the registration form, it mentioned that we're going to have rotations. Well, we're going to stay together like one big happy family, and we're going to just um, actually rotate towards you. So we're all going to stay together. Um, we're not going to be moving in and out of uh, class spaces. Um, so we still <laughs> we still have a lot of time um, to get yourself situated. I see some people are being funny in the chat. <laughs> Um, so again, my name is Dr. Lawrence Rashid, um, the BSU advisor. We have some of our BSU students that are going to be helping out. Olivia is going to be helping me out in this first part of the BSU, um, Tiny Titan Summit. Um, really going to get the energy going, get up, move around, um, do some phonics. Um, we're going to have some videos from Phonics Man, um, Feel Good Brother was doing a lot of great work. So we're gonna start off moving and grooving with that. Um, and then Chandler Henderson, he's going to show us a nice video called Recoil. And he's gonna to speak to that. And then we'll get up to our feature presentation, Dr. Clay White, and he will do the reading. So again, uh, we know people are still coming in. So we're being a little bit patient, allowing those to come in. Again, we will not have breakout rooms, we're gonna all stay together, like one big happy family, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. So um, if Eric Richardson is in the room, if we could have him speak, if he's not here yet, then we'll make Yes, sir. Okay, Brother Richardson, can you make the announcement regarding what's gonna take place on Saturday? Sure will. All right, yes, sir. I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank uh, Dr. Khalid. Thank you for being here. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, you know, I may be in and out of the meeting, but I, I just wanted to uh, just say that uh, we at the NAACP hope to just be able to open up the office this Saturday for everybody here in attendance and uh, any of your friends and whatnot come down to the office because we hope to be able to physically uh, give you all these books that we're talking about tonight. Uh, and, you know, Dr. Uh, Khalid's books, we have a shipment of the books. Uh, Dr. Lawrence, uh, you know, uh, has arranged for you all, and we hope to just use the space. And we also will be able to uh, give you tours of the historic Mims House, which is one of the oldest black owned properties uh, in Eugene Springfield, and it has its own history. And for the parents, uh, we also have a library. Just want to encourage you all to come down there, uh, become a patron of the library, check out a book, uh, get a relationship going there. Uh, and uh, we want to be able to have more books and more opportunities 
to support uh, brothers like uh, Dr. White. And, and uh, so as we go forward, uh, uh, just please check out the NAACP and come by this Saturday. That's between one and four o'clock, uh, 330 High Street. And uh, we have a food pantry uh, that's available at the Mims House, the library, walk through, see what's happening, pick up the books. Uh, there'll be some parking and whatnot. So we just look forward to see y'all there. And uh, thank you, Dr. Rashid. Thank you, Brother Richardson, Mr. Richardson, for that. Um, so again, you have the information where you could actually come by and get the book physically. So that's going to be a really good time. Uh, so before we get started, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out our first author of the Tiny Titan Summit, Mrs. Felicia Lane. And I have, you know, some of her books and she's working on some more, you know, the Tay series. Um, so Tay, look out for that. And so if you didn't get a chance to participate last year, we still have some books and I know she's working on some, on some more and we'll get her information to you. Also, um, we'll make sure that we get that um, address out to those parents that um, maybe didn't hear Brother Richardson when he conveyed the information regarding how you can pick up a book. So we'll make sure we have that or have that information in the chat where you can get it uh, from there. Okay, so it is seven after six. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna get moving and grooving. I have Olivia, she's gonna assist me in this and we're gonna get started with our first video. So you're gonna need some room. You're gonna need to move around. So we're going to get to our first one by the phonic man, the letter sound. All right. We're going to get it cranking. Okay. That was the phonic man doing this thing. Got to take a little breath because we got these COVID. Um, I'm big and I'm out of shape. So whew, that was fun. Hope y'all got a chance to move around. It's not done. For those of you who just joined us, welcome, Dr. Lawrence Rashid, the BSU advisor and African American Student Program Coordinator. That was fun. Woo. We're gonna get some more moving and grooving in. Olivia, you okay? You okay? All right. Okay, she's okay. My dance partner's okay. All right, so we're gonna still move and groove. We got a couple more videos. Um, at a phonics man. Um, Real, real dope individual doing a lot of great work um, with early readers. And so without further ado, we're gonna hit our next video. Let's get it. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm in a workout video. I hope y'all not laughing at me in this big dude who around back hurting and everything. Gluteus maximum on swole. But this is a whole lot of fun. Hopefully the babies are enjoying this. Um, is Dr. Hamilton here? She's in the house. Hey, Dr. Hamilton. She was dancing. <laughs> she was getting it on there, I'm telling you. <laughs> so this is our illustrious president of Lane Community College. Definitely wanted to give her opportunity to have a few words as I catch my breath. She was definitely participatory last year when we had our first annual Titan Titan Summit. So just wanted to give her opportunity to share a few words. Just want to say hi, everybody. I'm so happy you're here. I love books and I love dancing. So you put it together. Oh my goodness, it's the best ever. So just a shout out to everybody that worked hard to put tonight together and all our great authors. So have fun, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. Okay, um, before I need a wheelchair, uh, we're going to do one more video, <laughs> and then we're going to get to this awesome um, um, video and the channel here that we take over from there. So let's get to the last one, and thank you for being the last one. I need some Gatorade. Okay, those videos were from Phonix Man. And you definitely could catch those all those videos on YouTube. Again, shout out to Phonics Man for doing a great job. Uh, I need to get in better shape. This is ridiculous. Um, see, that's all them COVID calories. But anyway, I'm trying to work it out. Um, 
but if you just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome to our second annual ESU Tiny Titan Summit. We're off to a great start. We've been moving. Um, I've been hurting my back a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> it's just been a great time so far. Uh, we had a president who is here participating, welcoming everyone, waving at us all. We had Olivia who helped me with the dancing. I hope you were looking at her more so than me because I know I was embarrassing myself, um, but it's all for a good cause. So we're gonna keep it moving. Uh, we're gonna go to the next part of our um, event for today, which is we're gonna turn it over to Chandler um, and then we're going to watch a nice video and I'll let him talk a little bit more about that. Chandler. Hey, doing everybody, good evening. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I was not dancing because I'm a, a terrible dancer. You know, I, I, I dance a little bit at my wedding, but that's, that's about it. But the video that we have for you is called Recoiled. It's about long hair and um, big hair and the potential challenges that you might have for it. Um, you know, I've always had big hair. It's always been a part of my personality. I don't really know what I would do if I didn't have long, big hair. And, uh, you know, and I understand, you know, the kids, some kids might not like it, but a lot of kids do. And, uh, and I was one of those kids, and this is a video about that. And, you know, if any, anybody ever sees me around town, just say hi, and we can talk about our hair together. Now, should I be sharing this, or are you going to? OK.
That was great, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as, as I did. And I just want to have um, 
two, two, two reflections and I'll pass it to Dr. White. Uh, like I said, I have, I've always had long hair, um, afros, cornrows down my back in, in the, in the two thousands. Um, I remember once I even purred my hair cause I thought it was cool seeing, you know, the, the, the nineties rappers. And I remember when I purred my hair, I thought it was cool for 10 minutes. And I was so sad because I was used to, to, to having my, my Afro. And, you know, it was, I guess it was, it was cool for five minutes, but you know, my hair is, is, is so important to me that when I, when I changed it, um, I just felt like it wasn't me. And another thing unrelated, a lot of you kids haven't started growing beards yet, but I had a beard when I was really young. I was 13 when I had a full beard. And I remember kids would make fun of me, you know, they'd make fun of me for having a beard and they would tease me, you know, of course, now everybody's got a big old beard. You know, I didn't know at the time I was cutting edge cool, but the, uh, the point I'm trying to make to you is a lot of times when you're being teased by somebody for something, a lot of times it's because of jealousy or, or envy. And it's hard to see it in the moment, but as you get older and reflect on it, you'll, you'll be able to see it much clearer. And, you know, we've all been there and we all got your back. And uh, so I got to say. Thank you for that, Chandler. Before we go to Dr. Clea White and you talking about beers and everything, I've been trying to grow mine for <clears throat> so many years and I'm looking at Dr. White, he's clean shaven too. So you, you embarrassing us, Chandler. I'm drinking milk and everything else and I, 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 I still can't get it. So this, listen, I'm, I'm going to get a haircut and get this trimmed off because I, I can't. I, I, I just, My maybe bad. I could get some, you know, I don't know. You get those, those fake beards and everything. I don't know. I'm not going to do all that. <laughs> but in any event, um, thank you for that, uh, Chandler, the recoil um, short video, I think speaks to a lot of um, our participants. I, I know, um, Olivia, did you want to share something real quickly before we brought on Dr. White in regard to the video? Um, about the video? Yes. Um, well, I definitely related to a lot of that, like, because having hair like mine, my hair's in cornrows right now, but I usually have my afro. And I remember, like, the video, part of the video where the kid was, like, messing with her hair, like, that stuff happened to me in school, too. Like, I, I, like, kids would throw paper balls and, like, pencils at my hair, and I was just kind of, like, why what's the point and kids would always touch it and so seeing this video was real nice i remember wanting to straighten my hair so kids would leave me alone and when i did i hated it i didn't like it when it was straight i liked it curly more sorry you might hear my brother in the background he's playing pokemon <laughs> that's all good all good thank you for sharing that olivia um and i'm pretty sure some of us some other of the participants can relate to those stories about hair. Um, well, without further ado, um, we have our, 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 our keynote, our, our keynote attraction, our keynote reader. Um, Dr. Khalid White is an author, mentor, and he's a filmmaker. Um, and he's also a professor out of um, San Jose Community College. I believe I got it right. Um, and more than that, he's just a really good brother. I'm glad that we were able to get him to participate this year in our Tiny Titan Summit, and he's just phenomenal. So without further ado, pass it over to Dr. Khalid White. Dr. Rashid, thank you for that introduction. Thank you all, Lane Community College, for having me and the Eugene Springfield community. I really do appreciate it, um, President. Margaret Hamilton, thank you for also um, your attendance tonight. Chandler, thank you for showing that video. Although, as you can see, I'm, you know, um, hair deficient um, and I've been trying to grow the beard and no, it just doesn't work. But you know what, um, at, by the same token, you know, those stories of those two little girls kind of remind me of my own daughter and the issues that she had with her hair and people touching it. And, you know, your hair is your identity or as part of your identity. It's also, uh, we can trace it back historically and culturally. So for you know the African-American community, and I'm sure all communities really, our hair is very important and it's, um, it's part of us. And it symbolizes, you know, uh, again, just so much about us. So um, 
I'm glad you showed that. And if you can see some of these illustrations in the background, I really made it a point to emphasize certain hairstyles and hair textures and things of that sort on these young people in the illustrations because um, I wanted it to resonate culturally. So um, we'll get to that in, in just a minute, but thank you all for having me again. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you all for the second annual Tiny Titans Summit. All right. Um, I am Dr. Khalid White and I am, uh, you know, I, I do a few different things, but one of the things that I'm very high on is youth literacy. Um, particularly trying to help young people reach grade level proficiency at the third grade. There's so many statistics that are tied to third grade reading proficiency. And so I want each of you young people to um, understand that you have a very, very, very bright future ahead. And being able to read and being able to critically think and read will open up some doors and some opportunities for you. So continue to read young people. I would just encourage you that. You'll be able to do your math and your science too, but you have to have some literacy and some, um, you know, some reading skills, okay? In addition to the math, the science, the tech, and being able to be um, digitally savvy and things of that sort, those kind of those natural things that young people are picking up on today, but reading is still paramount, all right? So if I could get you young people and parents, community members too, if you can just repeat after me a couple of times, please. All right, repeat after me. Readers, readers. are leaders. Okay, one more time. Readers, readers are are leaders. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you to remember that readers are leaders. So, if you allow me the opportunity to read with you, I would love it. Is that okay? So let me try and share my screen and we will get started. We're gonna read the book, Little Brother. Okay, now I'm the big brother. So this book is kind of, you know, maybe based on a true story as they say, but it's more about seeing some of the kids in my family, uh, the nieces and the nephews and, you know, run around the house and kind of play after each other and play follow the leader and things of that sort, okay? So let's read together. All right, let's start. Little brother. This is the dedication. This book is dedicated to all children across the land. Continue to love, continue to read, and continue to lead. Because again, readers are leaders. One sunny Saturday morning, Jelani. Kenya and their little brother, Kari, were watching cartoons. They could hear their parents talking and laughing in the kitchen while they made breakfast for the kids to eat. You see, while in the kitchen, their parents were not only making breakfast, they were also making a way for Jelani and Kenya to learn a valuable lesson. Hey kids, come in here please. Breakfast is ready. Hey, shouted the kids as they rushed into the kitchen to eat. Their little brother Kari followed closely. Kenya. Jelani, have a seat. Have you two heard of the word responsibility before? Asked their mother. Can I get a show of hands from the kids? How many of you, just show me your hand or show me a thumbs up. How many of you have heard of that word responsibility? Any of the, any of the young people? Okay, great. I see the Carter kids with two thumbs up. All right, fantastic. Well, yes, I have mommy said Jelani. Me too. It's when you take care of your business. Right, Daddy? Asked Kenya. I see your, your hand up. The Imhotep McKenzie family. I see your, your thumbs up. All right. 
That's right. Do you know that your little brother looks up to you too? You two could help guide him in the right way, said mommy. We know you can do it. You see what's for breakfast? Those are gluten-free for all you health, uh, <laughs> healthy people in the crowd. Those are gluten-free, all right? Okay, we can show our little brother how we do it. Let's go, Kenya and Jelani agreed. Little brother, little brother, it's time to help clean. Little brother, little brother, we can all work as a team. Little brother, little brother, we need to wash our plates. Little brother, little brother, be careful on those skates. Little brother, little brother, help us feed the cat. Do any of you have pets? Show me your hand if you have any pets. I see some hands up, all right. Little brother, little brother, that is daddy's hat. Little brother, little brother, let's clean up our room. Little brother, little brother, don't play with the broom. Little brother, little brother, let's all play with the ball. Little brother, little brother, we won't let you fall. Little brother, little brother, let's play hide and seek. One of my favorite games. Little brother, little brother, don't you peek. Little brother, little brother, you can't fit on my bicycle. Little brother, little brother, and I can't fit on your tricycle. Little brother, little brother, let's help daddy wash the car. Little brother, little brother, don't take the hose too far. Little brother, little brother, we can teach you math. Little brother, little brother, but now it's time for a bath. Little brother, little brother, we love to read to you. Little brother, little brother, you can read to us too because readers are leaders. Little brother, little brother, you're our very best friend. Little brother, little brother, you're our little brother until the end. All right. That is the book, Little Brother. Thank you all for reading along with me. But thank you, Carter family. I see everybody clapping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're not done. We have a couple more pages to go, OK? Hang tight for me. So a little bit about myself as the author and also my illustrator, Tyrus, who is a wizard with the computer graphics. All right, for the young people, maybe you can even put this in the chat, your answers. What are things that you like to do with your family, young people? Think about it. What are some of the things that you all love to do with your family? I know we're in the pandemic. We spend a lot of time with our family. What are some things that you like to do with them, that you enjoy? Think about that. Put it in the chat you get a, if you get so inclined. Let's see. I like playing together and working together. I love it, love it, love it. Tennis, dance, that's what I'm talking about, yes. Playing, fantastic, playing tennis, class, swimming together. Ooh, I love it, love it, love it, okay. One more question to ask. Oh, playing in the garden or gardening, fantastic. Like going to the park, watching movies, eating popcorn with the family, yes indeed. What are ways that you will help your family in the future? Think about that. Each of you, very bright future ahead. Each of you is poised to be our next generation of leaders. What are some things are some ways that you will help your family in the future. Leilani, Francis, give them food. Hey, that is a great answer, important answer. Christian likes playing tennis with his family. All right, fantastic, Christian. I like to play a little tennis too. All right. And one of my favorite questions, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. What do you want to be when you grow up? Have you thought about that? Again, each of you has such a bright future ahead. What would you like to do when you grow up? 
So you could do more than one thing. Olivia, lawyer, love it. Superhero, yes, you already are a superhero. Love it, love the answer. Scientist, that's what I'm talking about. Greatest version of your best self. There we go. CEO of the WWE, a mere, a millionaire. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Great answers. A police officer, a builder. Fantastic answers. Fantastic answers. Great answers. Iron Man, an actor. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen. Keep working hard and working at your goals and working towards your dreams. When I, I want to be a farmer. Okay, Julian, I like that. When I was probably in the third or fourth grade, you know, I had a dream to write a book. And here it is, umpteen years later. And that is one of the things that I do. I remember being in third, maybe fourth grade. And I was like, I want to write books because I used to love to read. And here it is so far down the line. And that's, that's part of what I do now. All right. So Leilani, you can be a book writer. You can be an author. Julian, you can be a farmer. Absolutely. Put your goals in your mind and work hard to them or work hard towards them. All right. And remember, readers are leaders. OK. So I think we have enough time to maybe do a question and answer if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Rashid. OK. Do any of you have any questions or anything I can help you? find out more information on it please please feel free we will open the floor up to you all and thank you again dr white for that lovely reading that was great and, and informative and engaging and so yeah <laughs> we want to steal some questions from our audience especially for from the younger ones um so definitely ask questions while we still have a few minutes available um to us So I'm one of the questions, did you see that, yeah. Dr. White? Where can you find mm -hmm. the books? Where can you find the books? Yeah. You can find the books. Um, well, firstly, we're going to be sending some to Dr. Rashid, care of the NAACP, correct? So yes, sir. some of you will be able to get it locally at the local, um, the local NAACP Eugene Springfield branch this weekend. If not, you can also find the books on my website, which is, I'll put it in the chat but it's um, www.blkmpwr.com, okay? I see another question in the chat. I mean, you could also find them on Amazon and things of that sort too. Um, my books are there. So one of the questions I believe was from Leilani, mm -hmm. was how long did it take you to write the book, I believe? Yeah, Leilani, I think it was you that said you wanted to be an author too. So Leilani, this, this particular book, Little Brother, it probably took about, mm, I would say it took about five to six months in total to do it. And that's including the illustrations, the editing, et cetera, et cetera. So it didn't take me that long to write it, right? It took me maybe, I don't know, a month or so to write it and perfect it, but to get the drawings and get everything situated in shape, that took the longest part. So in total, probably around, around um, six months, okay? But that's because I had to say, yes, I like this, no, I like this. Put the shoes red, no, not purple. Put his hair like this, no, put our hair like that. You know, I wanted it to kind of, um, I guess, be perfect in my eyes. I want, I was a perfectionist. So uh, for you, Leilani, a person of your intelligence, it might not take you that long, but it took me about six months to do it. So a couple of questions, they're coming in now. Christian mm -hmm. asked, um, who drew the characters? Who, who drew, the yes, yes. Um, illustrated by the name of Tyrus Gaucher, who's um, in the Chicago area. He is um, uh, an illustrator that I found on Facebook and just loved what he did, loved his work. You know, it, it kind of jumps out at you. And so um, I chose him, but he's very talented, an educator himself, he teaches, you know, drawing and, and art and things of that nature out in the Chicago area. Okay, that mm -hmm. answers Dr. Hamill's question. And somebody asked who were like some of the black authors that I guess you looked up to, they coming in rapid fire. So okay. 
um, who are some of the black authors I looked up to? A man who was an author and a, a photographer, a man by the name of Gordon Parks. Um, definitely looked up to him. I looked up to, as an author, a lady named Sister Soldier. She was a person, she wrote a book that's not really for kids, but she wrote a book called The Coldest Winter Ever that really let me know that, hey, this is something that I could do. I mean, I, I devoured that book. I remember that and it, it's, it kind of re-sparked the fire in me just to get to writing. Um, who else are some authors that inspired me? There is a writer by the name of, um, oh, his la I can't think of his last name to save my life. It's Guy, um, Guy Johnson, Standing at the Scratch Line. I'm not sure if you heard of that book before. These are, these are kind of books that are not necessarily children's books, but um, you know, all those authors inspired me to really want to write. And um, yeah, I just was, I was inspired by a number of different people. And you know, to be honest with you, I know it might not be popular among the parents, but hip hop artists also inspired me to write because I like the way that some of them use wordplay and the wordplay kind of, you know, caught my attention, it caught my ear. So, you know, uh, a lot of the hip hop artists also inspired me to write. And I think you alluded to this, but someone asked, how long did you know you wanted to be a writer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I had a vision in the third, fourth grade. That's what, eight or nine years old, you know? So we're talking 30 something years right there, right? Um, that's when I knew that I wanted to do it. It became more real to me when I was probably 24, 25, reading Sister Soldier's book, uh, The Coldest Winter Ever. That's when I was like, man, this is, this is something I could see myself doing for real. The way that she put just realistic situations together. So I, was, I could do that. You know, it inspired me. Not I can do, I don't, I don't know if I was able to do that at her level, but I could do something similar in terms of putting stories together. And I loved it. And I've been, I've been hooked ever since. Um, I see one here, do I get writer's block? Yes, <laughs> it happens. So when I get writer's block, um, I put things down and come back to it later with the writing, you know? I love to start writing early in the morning. I need, a, I need, I'm the type of person that needs like quiet. So I might start at four or five in the morning and, and get busy on the computer, just typing away, type, 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 until I feel like, well, let me come back to this later, you yeah. And they said, what uh, would be one thing that you would tell a young, uh, your younger self about your journey to this point? And what did you see your biggest challenges? Um, mm. One thing I would tell myself, my younger self, if you have the goal or the desire to do it, you should get started doing it. Just try it. You know, for a long time, I didn't try because I was you know, concerned about what, what others might think about it, right? What, what the audience or general public might think. But at the end of the day, writing is for me. I write what I wanna see, what I wanna, you know, that type of thing, what I wanna hear, what I feel. And then I kind of try to tailor it to the audience. But firstly and foremost, it's writing for me. It's therapeutic for me. So I try to use it in that way. Um, and then what do I see is my biggest challenge? Shoot, really the 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 self self talk. Sometimes negative self talk, you know, like I'm I'm my biggest obstacle every now and again. So I have to reframe the way that I'm thinking, and um, just know that, you know, there's somebody out there that wants to read this stuff. <laughs> oh, absolutely, somebody out there wants to read it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and and to be honest with you, if I could just um, add on to that, to be honest with you. It's like when you're playing sports and you hear the crowd start to cheer, it gives you the confidence to keep doing it again. So every time I do a reading for young people and they like it or they ask me questions about it or, you know, or, or make comments and things of that sort, that gives me the fuel to say, hey, this is reaching somebody. Let me continue to keep doing it, keep working at my craft. Oh, absolutely. A few more because we're almost up against the clock. Okay. Um, so can personal journals become books? Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. Oh, well, I know so. Okay. Just look at Tupac, The Rose That Grew From Concrete. Those were all mm -hmm. his personal journals and personal poems and things of that sort that probably wouldn't have gotten published, you know, but those were his personal things that he turned into, you know, um, that got turned into a book. 
And I think this is a statement, and I think you could answer it because you have some background in filmmaking. I said, yes, also can become uh, movie scripts, um, put that pen to paper. Every story needs to be told, every. So, yes, definitely. Um, yes. Yes, and I think this will be our last one. It says, how do you respond to the haters who don't like your artistic interpretation? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Chandler. Um, every now and again, you're going to have somebody that doesn't see the same you know, vision as you, right? Doesn't have the same vision as you. Um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Art says something to you, Chandler, that it may not say to me and vice versa. So um, I don't necessarily respond to haters who don't like my artistic interpretation. I've had various people, you know, criticize this or that. And I'll just say, thank you for your opinion and keep moving. Um, some people like it, some people don't. And to be perfectly honest with you, overwhelmingly more people have liked it than not. So focus on those that do focus on those that are receptive and don't worry about the two or three, the four or five that may not be. Well, well and I'm talking you. as much to myself as I'm talking to you and answering that question. Well, thank you for that. Um, we're up against the clock. Let's try to squeeze this last one in as a, my, as a minority. I don't know if you see it, um, um, Dr. White. Mm -hmm. They said in the chat, did we, did we answer that last question? They said, I didn't see it all. They said as a minority. I missed it too. Let me see. Um, it's not a question, it's more of a statement. Okay. I don't see it. Yeah, correct, Blair. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. So hundred percent Blair. We'll we'll leave it at that. Before we leave, I want to thank um, Dr. White again for blessing us with the reading. I want to thank the BSU um, for their this initiative and doing this work. Um, thank Dr. Um, Hamilton, our president, for joining us today, dancing and reading with us. I want to thank Tracy Weimer, Deontay Carter, Randy Painter, the people behind the scenes who brought this together. I want to thank all of those who contributed to allowing Dr. White to be here. Um, definitely uh, thank you for that. Um, um, Ayana um, Miraguchi is working with the United Way and she is really feverishly working with parents to try to build their libraries and homes. And so definitely, you know, get with um, Ayana Mariguchi at the United Way. Um, maybe she'll put her information in the chat, but we definitely want to make sure babies have books to read at home and books where they could see characters that resemble them, right? And so this is an important thing that we're doing. Um, if I miss, thank all of the participants, all the babies, all of the young at heart, who participated in this event. It's been great. I didn't know how we we're going to do it virtually, but it, it, I see I'm looking at all the beautiful babies who are yawning and stretching and clapping. Thank you all for your participation. It's been wonderful. Looking forward to doing this again next year. Um, we have another event coming up. This one is not for the babies, but on March the 12th, make sure you check it out. And if you want a class to take next term, Check out the Black Male Study class that yours truly will be teaching. Got to give myself a shameless plug. And with that, good night. God bless. And we'll see you next year. Thank you. God bless. Representation is needed, people. Understand that. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me.